Hi there, this is Mark Haddad here again. So in this uh, first uh, lab, I would like to uh, explain to you about the single home the stop network. So uh, I have to explain what is really the single home the stop network. And uh, because we may have cases uh, when we are working on BGP that we have to configure something similar to this lab to our customer. So uh, this is something I'm going to show it to you in this lab. As you can see here, we have a lab of 11 points. Before I start doing those points, let's go to the lab scenario to show you what is our our scenario then I will come back to the points and start doing them so this is my lab scenario actually the single home the network I have already explained it to you in the previous uh, course and that means that you are having one connection to your ISP all right so that's what is the single home the network now in our scenario let's imagine that this is the upstream ISP and these are two ISPs this is ISP 1 and this is ISP 2 and those are customers. That is customer one and that is customer two. All right, just uh, an idea that we have su such a lab. Now, as you can see, we are having here single home because we see that this customer is connected directly to the ISP. Also, this customer is connected directly to the ISP. So that's a single home network. So that means what? We don't really need to say to the customer that uh, he needs to register for a public autonomous system. Actually, in single home, even though that we also don't have to make BGP at all, so we can just give them um, a uh, route, uh, then they can uh, send all the traffic to our ISP. But let's say that this customer say, I want to use BGP, and uh, but uh, um, I don't want to register for an autonomous system. So you can see that this here, it's a public autonomous system, 100, 102 also is public, 103 is also public, but here it is 65,500, uh, and also here 65,500. So that's a private autonomous system. Remember, I have explained that in the previous course, that when you have private autonomous system, those uh, autonomous systems shouldn't be seen on the uh, BGP because those are private. So you have to think it's like, private IP address that we have on, uh, for example, IP version 4. And that's why we can, for two customers, we can use 65500 for the two customers. That's not a problem because those are private. So you know that, for example, on the private IP addresses, you can use 192.168.1.0 in your network. But another guy in another network, he can also use 192.168.1.0. So because those are private. So the idea is as following. I'm going to make here BGP peers between the ISPs and uh, the upstream router. And th then those networks, I need to advertise them. So those we have to think we have here public IP addresses of those networks that needs to be, uh, or prefixes needs to be advertised in, into BGP. Then I'm going to do here also between the ISP one and this customer, I have to do also BGP peer and as well here, and then I have to advertise this and this network to BGP. So by the, at the end, Router one on his routing table should see one, two, three, four entries. So he has to see all those. But then we will see that router one will see that this entry and this entry are coming from 65500 autonomous system, which is a private autonomous system. That's something we really don't have to do that because otherwise we will cause loop and we will have problem. So we have to see how we can allow our customer use a private autonomous system so they don't need to register to a public one but how can we from here from the isp router not allow this private autonomous system and this one to be advertised or to be seen on router one all right so that's something we have to see that and then at the end we have to see if router one can reach all those prefixes and as well, remember that router one is the ISP, so he has internet. So we have to see if those all routers will be able to go to the internet. All right. So this is uh, the mission what we are going to do in this lab. So this is a lab for the single home stub network. So uh, it's uh, somehow it's not very complicated, but I would like to ask you to give attention because it's, uh, uh, we have here five routers and uh, we have a lot of uh, things to do. So now we know what is our scenario. Let's go back to the points and start doing that. Point number one, all IP addresses are already set as per the graph. So let me just put the graph here and let me show you. So if we go to router one, and if I say display IP interface brief, you can see this should be brief. So here we go. We see that the IP addresses are already set. This gigabit 0 over 0 over 2 is the one which is connecting me to the internet. Now I'm using private IP addresses 
because it's a lab. But normally when you are working in a, a production network where we are using BGP, you will see all uh, public IP addresses. But you can see that this router now can go to the internet. If I ping to a .a .a .a, you see it's able to go to the internet. So same, let me just show you one more, which is router 2. If I say display IP interface brief, you see that we have already the IP. And you see the 10.0.22.1, which is uh, the network that we need to advertise, it's on loopback. So I have created loopback interfaces on all the routers to be the network that we, or the prefix that we need to advertise into BGP. Port number one is done. Port number two, configure BGP peer between router two and router one, as well as router three and router one. So that is something like a summary of what we have learned from the previous course. We have to make the peer between the router one and router two and router one and router three. So router one is inside BGP. Look to the picture, you can see everything there. So inside BGP 100, I will give it a router ID 1.1.1.1. And then I will say peer. Our peer is router two, which is 192.1.2.2, which is inside autonomous system 102. So those are public autonomous system, right? So 100 and 102, they are public autonomous system. Then I make a peer with router 3, which is 13.3 inside autonomous system number 103. All right, so that's what we need to do on router 1. We go to router 2. And then from here, system view, BGP 102. And then router ID is going to be 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2. I have to make peer with 192.168.12.1, which is router 1, which is inside autonomous system 100. And then we have to go to router 3. Also, we have to make peer with router 1. We say BGP 103, that's the autonomous system, router ID 3.3.3.3. .3 .3 .3. And then peer. 192.168.13.1, which is inside autonomous system 100. So in a moment, we should have neighborship. If you want, we can go from router 1 and say display BGP peer. We can see that a neighborship has formed already. That's with router 2. And in a moment, we should see also neighborship with router 3. Point number 2 is done. Point number 3. Now we need to configure BGP peer between router 2 and router 4, as well as router 3 and router 5. So what we have done up to now, if we go to the picture, I made peer between BGP peer between those routers and those routers. Now I need to make the BGP peer between router 2, router 4, and router 3, and router 5. Let's do that. Let's first check router 1, if he has formed the neighborship between the two routers. And here we go, we have established, so that's fine. Now we go to router 2. Router 2 and router 4 should form the neighborship. So it is peer 192.168.24.4, which is inside autonomous system 65500. Please look to the picture, you can see that. So this is router 2. Now I make router 4. BGP. 65500 Router ID 4.4.4.4 .4 .4 .4. And we have to make peer with router 2 192 1.2.2.4.2 which is inside autonomous system number 102 So this is done between router 2 and router 4 Now we do between router 3 and router 5 We go to router 3 And now I have to say peer 192.168.35 dot five inside autonomous system six five five zero zero so you say now how come we are using for two customers we are using the same autonomous system which is six five five zero zero because that's a private autonomous system that's not a problem even if it's a another customer you can still use the same autonomous system while if it was public you are not uh, allowed to do that so uh, you should use the public autonomous system that you have uh, assigned from your authority all right, so that's it. Now we go to router 5. And now we have to do from here, we create the BGP instance. So BGP 
65500, router ID 5.5.5.5. Now we do peer 192.168.35.3. Please look to the picture so you can know the IPs. And now the autonomous system for router 3, which is for the peer, it is 103. Very good. So now let's have a look if the BGP has been formed. So we see that on router 2, it should have a peer with router 1 and router 4. So let's do that. Display BGP peer. So it has already with router 1 and it is with router 4. So very good. Now router 3 also should have with router 1 and router 5. So let's have a look. Display bgp peer also with router 1 and router 5 established established very good so so far so good now we have the peer of the bgp configured point number three is done point number four advertise the local networks into bgp of router 2 router 3 router 4 and router 5 what does it mean here if we go back to the picture remember we have those networks this one this one this one and this one we need to advertise them inside BGP and now we need to check at the end whether router 1 can see all of them. So we should see them inside his routing table coming from BGP. Alright, because that's the upstream router anyway. So that means he should see all the prefixes that we are advertising inside BGP. Let's do that. So let's go to the uh, router 2. We start with router 2. We are inside the BGP process, we have to say network 10.0.22.0.24. So this is for router 2. We go to router 3. We go to network 10.0.33.0.24. We go to router 4. We are inside BGP also, network 10.0.44.0.24 and then finally router 5 network 10.0.44 should be dot 55 here 55.0.24 all right so we have advertised the uh, the prefixes let's see if the upstream router can see all those prefixes let's have a look so we have to say here display bgp routing table and yes you can see this is from router 2 this is from router 3 this is from router 4 this is from router 5 very good so you can see them but look we have a small problem actually i don't think it's a small problem it's a big problem look he sees this network this prefix coming from the autonomous system 65500 and then 102 because it's coming from router 2 and also from this and from this so you see the private autonomous system and that's the upstream router that means this that's the router which is providing internet for our isp providing internet we are able to provide internet to our customers and this is not good at all that we shouldn't here have the private autonomous system shown on the upstream router right so that's something we need to solve it even though that the customer now is using private autonomous system because he didn't register for a, a public autonomous system that's fine for us but we as an isp we have to do something that uh, the upstream router doesn't see the private autonomous system otherwise we will end up having loop and problems and yeah that and also our isp or the upstream router will be really uh, the, the uh, company will be uh, uh, discussing with us why we have that we don't want to receive any a private autonomous uh, system so that's something i'm going to show you to you in a moment how we can solve the problem point number four is done and then point number five check on router one the, the prefix is coming from router four and router five do you see uh, do you see them or what do you see yes we see them and we see that uh, they are coming and showing also the private autonomous system so now we need to make a, a, a something to be able to the upstream router which is router one to not see those autonomous system the private one so they are saying here, remove the private autonomous system that are coming from router 4 and router 5. So what does it mean here? If we go back to the picture, and from here, so what's happening that uh, this 
prefix, which is advertised, it is saying that uh, this prefix is coming from 65500. And then this one is saying, okay, also I'm advertising this to you. So this router is seeing that the, the 10.0.44.0 network is coming from 102 and 65500. So this should not be shown on our routing table of the upstream router. We shouldn't allow this to happen. So there is a possible way that we, as we are here, we are the ISP. What we can do, we can tell our customer, that's fine, use private uh, autonomous system. You don't have to uh, register to a public one because at the end, you are a single home. That's, yeah, that's fine for us. But what we can do over here, we can remove this one, which is being advertised, 65500. We can remove it when we advertise that to the upstream router. So that means we have to go to router 2 and on the peer with router 1 on BGP, we can say remove any private autonomous system. So that means router 1 will see this network, but it will not see it that it's coming from a private autonomous system. You get the idea? Same we do between router 3 and router 1 for this prefix. Let me show you how this happens. Let's go first to router 1. And you can see on router one, he can see this network and he can see the private autonomous system, also that one. So what I can do, I can go to router two. And from here, I have to say peer 192.168.12.1, which is my upstream router. So the peer with my upstream router and I make question mark here. And if I go down, we have this one, public autonomous system only. Remove private autonomous system number from outbound updates. So when we are updating, saying to router one, which is the upstream, that there is this network on BGP, we don't uh, up update also the private autonomous system. We don't send it with the private autonomous system. So all I need to do here, I have to say public autonomous system only. All right. So now if, if we go back to router one, this should still be shown over there. So uh, normally you can wait until this is finished. Or if you want to go fast, what I can advise you to do on router 2, you say reset BGP all. So I'm just resetting the BGP process. Let's do the same for router 3 now, because we have also the prefix of router 5, which is going there. So I'll go to system view BGP 103. And then again, peer 192.168.13.1, which is the upstream router, router one. And then again, we make question mark and we use this one, public autonomous system only. Public autonomous system only. And then reset BGP all. All right, very good. So that's what makes for us that we will show now that this prefix is coming from us as an ISP. So we will see that the prefix of the uh, uh, router 4 will be showing it's coming from 102, which is from router 2. And the prefix from router 5 will be showing that it's coming from uh, router 3, which have the autonomous system 103, which is the public autonomous system. Point number 6 is done. Now, uh, before I continue the other points, which we have until uh, from 7 until 11, let's uh, first check. Uh, if uh, the uh, autonomous system has been removed, the private one, and then the points from 7 to 11, I will do them in another video, which is the upcoming video, just to not have the uh, lab very long. So let's first go to router 1 and see if we can see now the uh, prefixes. So let's check. Here we go. You see, it's beautiful. Now, 10.0.44.0, yeah, which is on router 4, it's saying that it's coming from 102, which is from router 2. It doesn't show anymore the private autonomous system. Same 10.0.55.0 from 103, which is router 3 autonomous system, the public autonomous system. It doesn't show anymore the private autonomous system. All right, so for now, I will stop the lab uh, up to now to here. So we have uh, uh, solved the problem of the private autonomous system, and this is how you can do it in case uh, you have something similar uh, um, in your uh, network. If you work on ISP and you have something similar to that, that's how you can do it. So I will stop the lab now, and I will continue the, the lab in the upcoming lecture. So see you in the upcoming lecture.